sorry, the computer cut off because of the charger. You forgot the charger. We've been talking about uh, indicators. So when the indicator change its color, the titration is said to be at its end point. So we tracing the change in the color from one color to another, or from non-color to color, or sometimes from color to non-color. Any change give us a clue for the end point, which is the point, when talking about end point, what we mean by the end point, which is the point in the titration where the moles of reactants, when the mole of who are the moles of reactants are exactly stoichiometric. So to, <clears throat> stoichiometric, sorry. <clears throat> I have problems with my throat. <clears throat> so where the moles of reactants are exactly stoichiometric. Yani she kafa chi and S A D kafa two mole ma one mole or one mole to one mole or three mole to one mole chemical equations and or water within two hydrogen one oxygen making two water means for each one oxygen mole one ox one oxygen mole you need two moles of hydrogen to make two moles of water that's stoichiometry so the molarity of the unknown solution can then be calculated so as you see, okay, we'll stay in there. That's the end point. Okay, and not doing that. Right. So, titration is an analytical chemistry tool or technique used to find an unknown concentration, so this one, of analyte, let's call it analyte, so you're finding out unknown, so remember titration is for finding concentration. Analyte, called tight rand by acting it with Non volume of concentration standard solution called tight. So you need to know these words. So we have analyte and title. So the non non volume of concentration of standard solution. When I say standard solution, it means the concentration is non well non and the volume is none, so that's called titrant. And the one which is unknown is called analyte. Then titration are typically used for acid-base reactions and redox reaction. You remember redox reaction is the reactions of changing oxidation states, one, one part, acts as a reducing agent and the other part acts as oxidizing agent so on the same reaction you have one part as oxidizing agent and the other part as reducing agent so the oxidation state changes not all reactions are redox not all reactions are redox reactions some reactions has no change in the oxidation state. So the concentration of a solution whose concentration is not known can be determined by titration with a solution of non-concentration. The concentration of a solution whose concentration is not known <clears throat> can be determined by titration solution of non-concentration. So titration means you have one unknown solution. And when I say unknown, I mean the concentration is not unknown, not the identity. You know, for example, if 
sodium hydroxide, but you don't know the concentration. You know it is a hydrochloric acid, but you don't know the concentration. That's what I mean. <clears throat> when I say not known, I'm talking about the concentration is not known. Not what, what is the chemical. So you have two solutions. One is non-concentration, and the other one is unknown concentration. So from the unknown concentration and by titration, we can find out the concentration. Sorry, from the non-concentration, by titration, we can know the unknown concentration of a certain solution. Uh, a certain volume of one solution is measured accurately with a pipette into, remember these words, pipette into a flask. And so you need a pipette, or some people with pipette. And you need flasks and few drops of suitable indicator. You need indicator as well. And remember, the indicator used is few drops, very few drops, just giving a color to the solution. The other solution is added slowly from a burate. So you have a burate until a color change is seen. And what we're we saying, we're saying color change. Color change means probably you have change in one color to another color, different color, or you have non-color solution, change to color solution, or color solution to non-color solution. Any change, it gives us, in this case, it gives us an idea or about the endpoint. <clears throat> so, and the volume added from the period is recorded. That's what you need for titration. This is pipette or pipette. This is pipette. And this is called section bulb or safe pipetting. Sometimes some of it could be dangerous, or in general, all acids are dangerous. It's, uh, it's not good to deal with acids like that because pipette needs suction the solution inside. So you need like vacuum this pipette from inside, of course. And that acid or that base solution will be filled by the pipette. Of course, that pipette is marked. For example, we have different pipette sizes. Could be, for example, 10 cubic centimeter or 20 cubic centimeter, sometimes 50, sometimes Less, uh, we have different range of volumes. Uh, you use the suitable one, the one you need, but that's in general the shape of the pipe. This, and we need that beaker number two, and that's called the burette. Of course, the burette is graduated by one centimeter divisions. So we can read what volumes added. For example, the level of the solution where here you start from zero and you start adding until you reach the end point and then you stop, you close that bulb, that upper is closed, and you read what volume added from the zero to the level of the solution. Of course, this is the non one, that's the non. And in the conical flask, you put the unknown one, the unknown one. So you read that volume, 
and you know the molarity of this solution in the burate. So in the burate, we have non-solution, non-concentrated. And in the flask, we have the unknown one. This flask, we have the unknown one. This is a round bottom flask, or we sometimes call it volumetric flask. Volumetric flask used in analytic theory. And that's installed, that's the mark there. When you fill that, when you fill it up to the mark, and of course the volume is written on this volumetric flask, that's why it's volumetric. That's for the non-solution, of course. So you take from this non-solution into the burette and the unknown by palpate the conical flask. I repeat, so in the burette, you add from the non-solution from this volumetric flask, concentration is non, and you fill it up to the zero level. This is zero here, here, somewhere. And you use this pipette to take a certain volume, certain volume, so you know the volume, but you, know, you don't know the concentration. You pour it in the conical flask. So you have now conical flask and you have burate. We fix these two together, something like, I believe it's here, something like this. That's the conical flask. Uh, usually, some people, they put tile, catchy, white catchy, white tile, or white paper, could be filter paper, just to make the color for your eyes clearer. Uh, in this case, in this example, we're adding phenolphthalene as indicator. And we have a four solution here, which is the unknown. And the NaOH solution, sodium hydroxide, which is known, which is in the burette. Of course, this burette needs something to hold it. So we use stand the burette and that's the pipette. So you use this pipette to add volume of, in this example, sulfuric acid, the conical flask. And I don't know this measuring cylinder. I think in this case, it's not really necessary or you might use it to add acid to the, sorry, the sodium hydroxide to the burette. But so the main components are the conical flask, and the unknown is the in conical flask, and you need a burette and the non solution in the burette. But we don't know how much volume we're going to calculate it. So we start adding this sodium hydroxide to this H2SO4 solution, so the reaction will happen between the NaOH solution and H2SO4 solution. Of course, as you know from basic chemistry, that sodium hydroxide, when it reacts with sulfuric acid, it's an acid-base reaction. So the product must be a salt, which is Na2SO4, sodium sulfate, and water, of, of course, water. So this is it, this is titration. Apparatus needed for titration is this. If we take some example, <laughs> so we have example number 27, it says a 25 ml, 25 cubic centimeter, we mean, of course, solution of 0.5 molar molarity of sodium hydroxide, 
titrated until until neutralized T cubic centimeter sample of HCL. But was the concentration of the HCL is a very simple. You have non-volume of sodium hydroxide. You have the non-molarity uh, of sodium hydroxide. And you have the volume of the hydrochloric acid, but you don't know the concentration. The obvious is to find out the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, HCl. So first of all, determine OH concentration. This type of a bracket of OH, it means concentration in molarity usually. Every mole of NaOH will have one mole of OH. Therefore, OH is 0.05. Because NaOH gives one Na and one OH in the solution. So the molarity of NaOH is same as the molarity of the OH. And then step two, step two, determine the number of moles of OH. So you know the molarity. Of course, molarity is the number of moles divided by volume. We say this many times. The number of moles equal molarity. Some volume number of OH moles is equal to 5 molar times 0.205 demi cube. Remember, we converted cubic centimeter to decimeter cube. We do that because molarity is in mole per decimeter cube. So the volume must be in decimeter cube. Number of moles of OH is equal. 0.0125 mole. So we know the number of moles of <clears throat> right. And now step three, determine the number of moles of hydrogen ion. When the base neutralizes the acid, the number of moles of hydrogen ion equal the number of moles of H. One to one. So one mole of sodium hydroxide neutralize one mole of hydrochloric acid. So it means the number of mole of uh, hydrogen is same as the number of mole of hydroxide. So simply we can find out the molarity because we know the number of moles and we know the volume. So you multiply the number of mole by, sorry, divided by volume, divided by the volume, you get the molarity. Or you can go to the other way, which is the same as the first one, but you know, let's say molarity of acids times volume of acids equal molarity of base times volume of base. Means the number of mole of acid equal to the number of mole of base. Let's carry on with uh, another example. Example 28 says what volume of two molar hydrochloric acid is needed to react uh, completely. The word completely means until end point. With 5.65 gram, look at this one, it says gram, so you need to convert this gram. You cannot deal with gram in titration. You have to convert it to, to number of moles. And the reaction is given calcium hydroxide with two mole of hydrochloric acid giving CaCl2 and two mole of water. So the first step you need to do is to convert that mass to number of mole or to molarity. So the number of moles, you divide the mass, which is given in the question, by the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. You need the molar mass of calcium hydroxide, which is 74.09 gram per mole. And we get 0.073 mole. 
So that's the number of moles of calcium hydroxide. Now, you have two M CaCl2, sorry, CaOH by two times volume equal molality of HCl times volume. Why are we having two on the side of calcium hydroxide and we're having one molar of HCl? If you look at the equation for each one CaOH by two, you need two HCl. So two molar of HCl neutralize one molar of calcium hydroxide. That's why we write two of CaOH equal <clears throat> one HCl. So if you look at the equation now, the reaction is CaOH by two uh, with two HCl giving calcium chloride and two mole of uh, water. Now, one important point in this question, you have to realize that you have two HCl, one CaOH2. It means calcium hydroxide giving an each one molar CaOH by two is giving two molar hydroxide. That's two, two times this one. So for each two molar CaOH by two times volume, which is the number of moles, because CaOH is giving two moles, while HCl is giving one mole. So we write one molar HCl times volume. That's the relationship between CaOH by two and <clears throat> so when you, when you do this, you can't carry on with the equation. You just need to substitute the values. You have this question, of course. You have the volume of the HCl and you have the number of mole of CaOH2. You're having the molarity of HCl, one, and you have the mass, which you can convert it to mole, as we said. So we can say volume of HCl is equal, that's the number of mole, you find it out divided by half times two molar of HCl, so we get this volume. One of the most important points in this question, when you have a reaction like this one, two of HCl, one of CaOH by two, Remember that this CaOH by two for each one mole of CaOH by two is giving two moles of OA, two times, not one time. <clears throat> one is different, this is one to one, the reaction of NaOH with HCl is given by the equation shown. We have sample of is 0.2442 molar HCl and the volume is 25 cubic centimeter. It needs this volume of NaOH. So obvious the question is asking for the concentration of NaOH. So you have volume, molarity, none for HCl. You have volume of the unknown NaOH. 
when I say unknown, I mean the concentration. So what's the molarity of NaOH then? It is one to one. Remember, this example is different. Example 29 is different than example 28. One to one ratio. In this one, it is two to one. In example, one to one. One to one. The molarity of NaOH <coughs> equal number mole of NaOH divided by volume. The volume of an solution that's 19.2 or 0 0.01926 decimal cube. You need to convert that centimeter to the Symmetric cube. Okay. So from the equation, number of mole of an H equal number of mole of HCl. That's from the equation. It is one to one. One mole HCl with one mole NaOH. So you can find out the molarity of NaOH. Thing is given in the question. The only thing you're looking for or you need is the molarity of an AOH. We're giving you an exercise to an AOH plus H2SO4, giving an A2SO4 plus 2H2O. Remember, this one is similar to. The example, example one number was this, 28. Example 28. Number, this is two, this is one. Because each one H2SO4, it gives two hydrogens. Two hydrogens. Uh, we can also predict the volume of a solution of one reactant that is required to react completely with a certain volume of another reactant if the molarities of both solutions are known. Just a matter of predict. Let's go to this example. Let's say it's calculate the volume in cubic meter of 0 0.350 molar NaOH required to titrate 20 cubic centimeter of 0 0.250 molar H2SO4 is a similar size just now. We're having in this question asking us for the volume of molarity of NaOH required, what volume we need of NaOH which is non-concentration, to titrate 20 cubic centimeter of non-molarity H2SO4. So you have SO4 with non-molarity non and non-volume, and you have the NaOH with non-molarity but unknown volume. Again, we have in here, that's the equation. That's NaOH, that's actually neutralizing this base, NaOH, put it blue, and H2SO4, which we are represented by this color, red color. You have the molarity of NaOH, and you have the molarity and volume of H2SO4. And remember, two mole of NaOH neutralize one mole of H2SO4. Why are we saying that? Because H2SO4, one H2SO4 neutralizes two NaOH. The number of mole of NaOH is equal two times the mole of H2SO4. Each one H2SO4 giving two hydrogen ions, which is neutralized two more of an ion. This H2SO4 
is giving two hydrogen ions. So you have two hydrogen ions with the acid and one hydroxide with the NIH. So one more of H2O4, which is giving two more of hydrogen, and neutralize two more of NaOH. Again, similar to the examples we did, similar to this one for the calcium hydroxide, as you remember, we did. Which one is it? Sorry, yeah, no, this one. Similar to this one. Same idea. But in this one, the base is di hydroxide. This example, the last example, you have the acid is dihydrogen ion, two hydrogen ions. Another exercise for you, exercise up to exercise 30, and that in the part one, analytical chemistry. If you have any questions, we are more than happy to answer your question. And whatever you need, just give me a call. Or if you want, we can have a meeting and explain the point of view. Thank you very much. And we hope to carry on with the part two.